How we doing, y'all? What is vibing? This is Vish, and today I'll be responding to Osho's video on There Is No Tomorrow. Before we start, let's take some meditative breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. I honestly don't know too much about Osho, so if there's any other video requests or recommendations you have for me, please just comment that down below. I have heard some interesting things and talks about how Sadhguru is kind of similar to Osho, whether it's his outfits or the way he talks. But honestly, let's find out. I really don't know too much and let's get right into the video. You have no philosophy of life. No philosophy of life. I have life itself. There are people who have philosophies of life, but they don't have any life. Your philosophy, if there is one, has been expressed in the three L's, love, life, laughter. Is that a philosophy of life? No. What, could you explain that? Right off the bat, I'm seeing quite a lot of similarities with Sadhguru in terms of the way he's talking. Really just one in the sense that he's correcting the talker, or in this case the interviewer. And secondly, how he really isn't for philosophy. A lot of people have confused philosophy with spirituality, but without saying too much, all that I know is that there is a big difference between the two. But let's hear more. It is just a consequence of being silent and in tune with existence. Love arises in you. Life becomes abundant. Laughter for no reason. Just because this whole existence is so hilarious. This is not philosophy. This is the consequence of being silent. Is it to enjoy life and not worry about tomorrow? There is no tomorrow. If there is tomorrow, you cannot stop worrying about it. If tomorrow never comes. It is a process of worrying. Neither there is any yesterday. One is no more, one is not yet. All that is in our hands is the present moment, now, here. So right there, when he's talking about the present moment, this is definitely reminding me of Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle always talks about the power of now and how this present moment is all that we have and all that we'll ever have. So really beautiful points he's making and like you said, there is really no tomorrow and there's also no yesterday. Let's continue. And this is a miraculous experience. If there is no yesterday, no tomorrow, and this very moment you are, Silent. All worrying disappears. All imagining, dreaming, projecting disappears. And it is not that you have to enjoy this moment. That rejoicing arises out of this moment. But you are never here. You are always somewhere else. You are never in the now. You are always then. Otherwise, everything is available. But you are absent. I 
to make my people to understand a very simple fact, not a philosophy, something existential, not philosophical, that you be present to this moment and then see what happens. Wow, this was the first time I've watched a full Osho video. And I know this is an excerpt from, I think it was an ABC News interview is what they said, but it was, it was still a full snippet uh, or of a topic by Osho himself and how important this present moment is. I really vibed, I will say. It is interesting seeing the way he talks. He's very, almost Eckhart Tolle-ish. Uh, in the sense that he is taking pauses, he's very slow with his words, uh, there's a lot of silence. And comparing him to Sadhguru, not to say one is better or worse, but just out of pure objective uh, differences in what I'm noticing, uh, Sadhguru definitely has more of a bolder, fiercer uh, presence. He tends to be not as slow. He will take pauses, I've noticed, but when he does speak, he does speak more continuously. Now obviously these are just not too significant, just things I've noticed and um, it's really just because it's the first time I've seen an Osho video. So that's why it's super fascinating to me just to see this new style of messaging, of getting his words across to the viewer. Now I will start by focusing here on this particular example with regards to the difference between philosophy and spirituality. You see, a lot of people tend to confuse the two. A lot of the people tend to view life, especially the more, let's just say, modern day people, right? That are so in tune with the material world, whether it's that nine to five job. And again, not to say that they are less or more than these spiritual people, because there are people that are doing both material and spiritual. It's really just the point of realizing how a lot of these material people, and I've seen this from just personal experiences as well, tend to view this spiritual as like this woo-woo thing and philosophy as uh, a useless waste of time. Now, I'm not going to be trying to pass my judgment on philosophy uh, because I myself haven't experienced too much of it. But what I do want to be clear about is that spirituality is not philosophy because philosophy literally is, again, with the limited experience that I have on what it is, comes down to the morality and fundamental way we think about life. That's how I interpret it. And if you have a different view, please comment down below. The point is, spirituality is a much more deeper thing. Philosophy really can't exist without the mind or thoughts. Spirituality is literally the fundamental basis of this existence. As Osho was mentioning, or Eckhart, or even Sadhguru, I mean, literally silence itself is the most beautiful dimension of spirituality, or at least one of them. It is a beautiful source of portal, as Eckhart Tolle puts it, with getting in tune with the spiritual. So that's, a that's the first thing I want to really just clear out of the air. Spirituality can exist without thoughts. Philosophy really can't. And that's like the basis of distinction that I would like to make. And with the experience I've had with life, which is quite limited, and I'm not saying I'm any major philosopher or spiritualist or even spiritual teacher by means, what I'm really trying to get at here is that I feel like a lot of these philosophical questions like what is the purpose of life, what is the meaning of life, why am I here, all these questions are very philosophical in nature and honestly, I really don't think they're very practical and yield that much of use in your daily life. If anything, I feel like thinking too much about these things can just lead you to waste your life. But with spirituality, it's not about questioning such things, but it's about becoming the answer. This might sound confusing, but for those of you that meditate and are on this spiritual journey, you'll know more of what I'm talking about. It's not that questions are bad, but focusing just on the questions, it's like how Eckhart Tolle talks about this with regards to the Buddha. He was asked, where do thoughts come from? And he very simply just asked or responded by saying, when you're stuck 
when you're struck with an arrow, do you question where it came from or do you focus on removing it? And that's the same principle that applies here. Questions are great and philosophy is cool, but at the same time, I feel, and I, again, I want to be prefacing by saying that this is coming from a limited amount of awareness and experience, although I'm seeking to expand that. Spirituality is a lot deeper. It's about getting in tune with life itself, not questioning life. It's becoming life or realizing that you are life. So it was really cool. I mean, Osho really did, I think, a solid job of getting his point across, at least to me, uh, in terms of how I interpreted him. It's really cool to see how he's also in this Western audience and getting his views across to this newer uh, part of the world. Obviously, spirituality did kind of stem from the Eastern area, whether it's South Asia and, and so on. So it's really cool to see that the West was receptive and even had him on a new show. But with all that being said, I really just want to wrap this up by emphasizing the point that he was making, which is that there is no tomorrow, literally. It's just a thought in the mind. The past is no more. That's also a thought in the mind. That's the part of the memory. And the future thought is the imagination. And as Sadhguru says very beautifully, human beings have two very powerful tools, the imagination and the memory. And we are suffering those powerful tools. We get so stuck and attached to the past that we just stay sad over things that have happened and that we can't change. And others get attached to the future and keep worrying about what's going to happen then, what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen the next week. Again, those aren't real. The only real thing that you really have ever is this present moment. And he does make an interesting point, this is Sadhguru that is, about how we don't have to be present because we, all, all, we are all actually always present. But it's our thoughts that make us think that we're not. And so the advice that I really appreciated from Osho here, as well as Eckhart Tolle in general, it's really just about this illusory creation that the mind makes and projects onto us, which makes us think that we're not present, but we actually are. And so by doing very simple things like, let's just say getting grass steps outside, uh, walking with nature, aka God's creation, uh, meditating, yoga, all these beautiful techniques and tools will help you, let's call it defog, that illusory cloud. And then you will just be one with life. And it's just a beautiful thing. Thank you so much for watching this response to Osho's video on There Is No Tomorrow. It was the first video a reaction I've done to him. So if you have any other video topics from him or other spiritual teachers or any other topics in general, videos, comment down below. And with that, make a great day, take it joyfully, and stay conscious. Ecstasy.